very pleased to have with us on the show right now, Tom King, head of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. Mr. King, good evening to you, sir. Cam, always a pleasure to speak with you. Hey, it's great having you on the show tonight. Uh, ran across this story, actually, while we were on the air last evening. Uh, the Courthouse News reporting, police must release info to the New York Times. Uh, the New York Times can look at records of city residents with gun permits, as well as access an electronic database of reported hate crimes. A Manhattan judge has ruled just as Jane Solomon ordered the city of New York Police Department to release the requested records with deleted names and addresses of retired cops uh, and also current, apparently, uh, current government employees who are also uh, gun permit holders. They're going to have their names redacted. But every other legal gun owner in the New York City is now going to, uh, in essence, be outed to the New York Times. What's, what's your take on this, Tom? Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm against it, obviously. Okay, um, However, it, it, it is New York state law. But what really uh, really it amazes me is that three years ago we sued New York City for the same list, and the courts turned us down. What? Yeah. Wait. <laughs> okay. First of all, what, why were you seeking the list? Well, we wanted to uh, just have a, be able to contact our our, our brother, uh, you know, gun owners in New York City to let them know what was going on and to know that let them know that they had a a friend in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. Okay, and you were told no. Why? Well, because it was a private list, and that uh, we and we in fact even took it to appeal and lost on appeal. Wow. Wow. And so so did did the judge in this case, Tom, do you know uh, why, why she said the New York Times was entitled to this information? Uh no, I I'm I'm really I'm I'm amazed at that because it that has been uh the um the the the, the New York City judges have not allowed this to be you know the list to be made public. Other one other time uh some one of the newspapers got it and printed, published part of the list, and uh, and they were they were chastised about it. I, I I would bet that this is this is just another method of making life difficult for gun owners in New York City. That's that's exactly what it amounts to. Um, okay, and, and and as I said, I mean, you know, the New York Times clearly wants to do something with this information, and I doubt it's going to be a story talking about how. Um discretionary and, and how sort of arbitrary the uh, licensing of uh, uh, people who want to become a gun owner in New York City really is. I think this is going to be a story that's going to be a hit piece on New York gun owners. Oh, I, th I think it is, too. And I think that what they're going to do is I think that they're going to try try to tie it in with, uh, you know, uh, domestic violence people. Because you'll notice they also applied for, uh, what was it, uh, another list as well? Yeah, uh, a, an electronic database of reported hate crimes. Yes, I think that you're probably they're probably going to try to to uh, you know bump the list against each other to find out if in fact any of the uh, the people who have guns were were also on the hate crimes list or, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting. Uh, the the judge in this case said that um, retired police officers uh, and government employees uh, again they don't have to have their uh, their, their names released because. Uh, might endanger those uh, th those individuals, um, Tom. I think that that argument can be made for every gun owner uh, in New York City. Every, oh, every 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 gun owner has a legitimate reason that they could give a judge or a government as to why they don't want their uh, personal information out there, why they don't want it to uh, necessarily be known that they are a gun owner. And you know what? That's their choice to make. It's not the government's choice to make to say. Well, I, I, totally, I totally agree. I mean, I, I think that the, the list, you know, should, should, the, the list should be confidential. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, there's, there's just no way that it should be made public, you know. Yeah, and, and so you've got this, you know, I, which I, I guess, Tom, you know, to me goes back to the the argument against a, a a a permit to exercise a constitutional right to begin with. That, that's ex that's exactly right, and you know, uh, and unfortunately, you know, the um, the Second Circuit Court of Appeals in in New York State 
uh, you know, the Federal Cir- Circuit Court of Appeals ruled, uh, you know, about about a year ago now, maybe a little over a year ago, that the Second Amendment did not uh, did not pertain to the people of New York State. Wow. And that's after the uh, no, that was that was that was uh, Sonia Sotomayor made, helped make that decision, right? Yes, she did. That was uh, that was after Heller. After Heller, before McDonald, and then uh, Sotomayor uh, uh, voted in the McDonald case that uh, the Second Amendment was not an individual right, uh, was not a fundamental right, and should not be incorporated against state and local government action. That's right. And thankfully, she was uh, uh, not in the majority on that uh, decision. That's but right. It was she a, was in the minority. It was a five-four decision, though. You know, again, I mean this. It, this new if 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 Americans are satisfied with New York gun laws and maybe they think even New York gun laws uh, could stand tightening up, then you know what I I I guess go vote for Obama next year. But you know if 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 you don't want the rest of the country to look like uh, Mayor Bloomberg's uh, you know uh, uh, gun control paradise, then we've got to start speaking up and we've got to start speaking out about stuff like this because it really is outrageous the uh, the microscope that these folks are willing to put law-abiding legal gun owners under while ignoring uh these violent criminals oh that's that's exactly that's exactly right if you you know uh the, the, you know i i I've, I've talked you know through uh, through my position on, on the nra board and I, i've talked with people you know all over the country regarding this and, and a lot of the uh, uh a lot of the the good law-abiding uh, citizens out west who have, you know, no issues uh, or hardly any issues with with their governments, uh, local governments on the on the, the firearms issues, just don't realize how tough it is and how big a fight it is in New York. And uh, I, I I urge them to you know to please you know look at. All of the issues when it comes when it comes time to vote, you know, next year because it could be a, it could be a death knell for our Second Amendment rights. Well, listen, Tom, I'm really glad you could join us on the program tonight, sir. Uh, and and let us know uh, if you hear any rumors about this New York Times story coming out, will you? I will certainly do that, Cam. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Tom King, joining us, the president of the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association.